and welcome to the Let Love In Live. I'm Iris Van Ruby, your host, and here we are in our 10th summit. And I've got a first time guest. I've got Cynthia Mazzaferro. Welcome, Cynthia. Hi, Iris. How are you? And I'm so excited to be on your wonderful summit. Well, I'm thrilled to have you on because you're going to be speaking to us about powerful beyond measure. Claim your power within for a happy and healthy life. And I think that that's such an important message for all of our viewers. And before we go there, what I want to do is to tell our viewers a little bit about you. Mm -hmm. So Cynthia Mezzaferro, did I pronounce that right? You sure did. That's fine. <laughs> Cynthia Mezzaferro is a highly acclaimed and gifted motivational speaker, number one Amazon best-selling author, energy and intuitive healer, Reiki master, and powerful beyond measure life coach. Her passion is to empower people in their personal growth, health, and purpose. As a master of intuitive connection, Cindy is able to bridge the voice of your soul to the truth of your heart. Her spiritual journey is wonderful, magnificent, and filled with awe and wonder. Cindy's new inspirational and transformational number one Amazon self-help book, Powerful Beyond Measure, explores your past, empowers your present and envisions your future filled with purpose passion and miracles she guides you to come alive to your power within where all is possible so cynthia can you maybe quickly tell people where they can get your book oh sure actually any online um store amazon barnes and nobles indie and actually the books will be actually available come april 4th in bookstores so if you Rather buy one at a bookstore, just if they don't have it, just inquire and they'll be able to order those for you. But they're available right now on Amazon and I encourage you just to go there and, and purchase up your, either your Kindle version or your paperback. Wonderful, thank you for that. So my first question to you is given that most people that are watching this are either in relationship and want something more or really struggling with finding a great partner. Why do you think so many people experience difficulty with relationships, and maybe also being unhappy? It's a great question, and it's a really personal question for each of us, and we all have something we're bringing from our past into our relationships in the present day. And I'd like to just briefly share my story, because I think it will resonate with all of us in some way. So I was one of five daughters, and my father and mother got divorced when I was seven years of old, age. And the girls ranged from nine years of age down to nine months old. And for me as a second oldest, I viewed it as how could a man love, create these women, these beautiful little girls, and walk away? How could he abandon us? So that's the way I viewed it as a seven-year-old. And so all my life, I always saw this empty chair. You know, there was empty seat at the supper table, or he didn't walk me down when I got married. There was no father-daughter dance. Um, and so it was really a, a very hurtful, painful, emotional pain in me. And it really impacted me in many ways. But what I really was looking for, because I didn't have it, was male confirmation. I wanted men to affirm me, to say, like your, like your husband, like your father would say, is, oh, your daddy's little girl, you're so perfect, you're so beautiful, blah, blah, blah. And I never had heard that, never received it. And so as a physical therapist, which is my profession, and then I went into ergonomics and did a lot of work assessments and analysis in businesses, and I worked primarily with 90% men. And I was getting all those affirmations. I was awesome. I was training these men, telling them how to lift and how to prevent injuries. So I was getting all that feedback. But inside of me, there was always this thirst for wanting more from men especially. And one day, my husband came down with tears in his eyes before he spoke a word. And he said, I love you, but I can't live with you anymore. And he was ready to walk out the door. And I'm thinking, my gosh, this is like my father walking out of my life again. I had given everything to our relationship, our marriage. We had two wonderful boys, men. And had a wonderful financial security, our home. He had, I had helped him and supported him, raise him up, and I had taken a, a leave in my work. I mean, what more could I have given this man in our marriage? 
And as I'm standing there with tears down my eyes and I couldn't catch my breath, and I'm like, oh my gosh, my world's being destroyed in an instant. It was like a flashback. And I'm happy to say now, 35 years later, we're still married. But in my book, I actually go through and I share the story how the way we perceive relationships, our past as a child, is actually energetically, emotionally affecting us internally. There is such a strong connection to us internally. And so what I found out, and it goes into much more detail in the book, what I found out was I was actually creating almost a perspiration, almost um, an, an expectation that men and even women would leave me, even if they loved me. And even as I wrote this book, there was a time, after all my hard work of healing this wound, healing and releasing this emotional pain, for example, my editor had a death in her family. Her partner died. And she said as she was grieving for months and months, I can't work on your book. I'm just so lost. And so I just can't. I'm walking away. It's like there was another person walking out away in my life. And she loved my book, loved my tears. So in my mind, there was always this thought that there's someone going to be always walking away. You know, a girlfriend, I'm going to go to this person's house instead of your house. So they're picking someone over me. And so it's always impacting relationships. And I want to encourage everyone that's on your summit, Iris, that we have to take individual responsibility for how what we bring to our relationships, our expectations, our behaviors, our beliefs, and how we can take ownership in that and change that. It's not about them not loving us. It all comes down to us not loving ourselves. And so I was looking for all this affirmation, all this love from outside of me, and I was receiving it. But inside me, I was an empty vessel, and I wasn't filled up because it was like filling a gas tank. You keep putting me in from the outside, right? But if the inside's always empty, it just keeps kind of pouring through this little funnel, and it just pours right out of you because... There's nothing there to catch it. You're not loving yourself. And so it was really an important lesson for me to learn and grow from. And I've learned it in many, many different ways. And a lot of the different tools and techniques are in this book and actually will help you to figure out what it is from your past that's really impacting your relationships today. And when you can articulate that and claim that, your world will change in ways that you can't even imagine. You know, you think, oh, I want a person in my life. And you think, oh, it'll be nice. We'll, we'll sit together on the couch. We'll do this. But when you start to really change who you are and love yourself and really see this wonderful person, then the world sees you as this wonderful person. So it's really important that people understand and take ownership that we bring into our relationships the way we feel we should be loved, the way we expect people to treat us. And if I'm always thinking people are going to walk away, guess what's going to happen? There's going to be the energy, law of attractions. We bring to our life what we create in our mind, and that's the energy we put out. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. You know, my, my sense is that most people have grown up into some level of belief of I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, I'm not... I'm invisible, I am not important enough. And so you're saying that that belief kind of creates a hole in the bottom of the gas tank and no matter how much gas you pour in, you pour in, it's never going to fill you and that your work is actually to learn to love yourself. Right, I truly believe that our whole lesson as a soul, as a spirit, not our physical body, our soul, we were born into this physical world to learn something. And it could be that you need to learn to have a voice, but by learning to have a voice, what you're really doing is learning that you have wisdom in your voice. You have an important thing. So it all comes down to the very basic is loving yourself. And that doesn't mean you're loving yourself over other people. You just have to love yourself and learn to grow and appreciate yourself and all the beautiful gifts you have. And that what this does is it empowers you. Okay, so Iris, I can sit here and talk with you. You know, we're, we're, we're kind of new friends, but we're friends. And um, I can say, you know, I wonder how Iris is going to really like me, you know. And I'm like, you know, I have to be okay with me. And maybe we're not going to be the best of friends, and that's okay. 
Maybe we will be the best of friends. But I am okay with who, who I am right now. And that iris can't make me more than what I am or less than what I am because unless I give her that power to do that. It's really important that you are the one that gives away your power. And so by learning to claim that power within yourself, which is the subtitle of my book, you become powerful beyond measure. And that's the magic in this whole process. And that when you start to, like when I started to, um, so after this editor left, and I said, you know, I kind of talked to myself, you do the mental talk, and I said, okay, God, universe, whatever the word you want to use. I said, then, you know, as much as that's difficult, I've got to go interview new editors and this and that, I'm hoping that you're going to bring in the perfect one better than this one. That's going to really give me more spontaneous results, quicker results, um, because I was frustrated she wasn't giving it to me quick enough, and that she's really going to stay with me until the end of the project. And I created this whole visual intention, expectation, and within 24 hours, I got the couple um, references. I called them up. We talked, and I was, she was hired. So it turned out to be good, but I, you create the energy that they're going to stay with you. And it's just like, I don't know if you've ever heard that. If you want, let's say, a partner in your, to come into your life, take half of your closet and make space for them. Empty out a couple drawers. And, and also when you go out, present yourself not because you're trying to attract someone. Present yourself that you feel attractable, that you are so lovable. But if anybody's going to love me, they're going to get such a great catch. I am wonderful. So you, if you love yourself, then you're love when you're lovable and then you can be loving to the people in your life all right so you may have answered this question already but you know many people infer from their experiences that they're not lovable and many people i'm watching i imagine would have been told specifically that there's something wrong with them they're not lovable they're not valuable what's that first step to move towards loving themselves it's a great question. And first of all, the universe is specifically giving you that situation because that's exactly the lesson you have to learn, okay? And until you learn it, you're gonna have more and more opportunities that are gonna be presented. And sometimes they grow in intensity because you're not learning your lesson as a soul. So the first thing I think you have to do, and what I do in my book, is articulate why is it that you don't love yourself? What is it that you don't love about yourself? What was the initial part um, where you don't, you don't love yourself because you were told you were ugly or you thought you were ugly, um, which is true or not true? It's really just your perception. Even if someone else told you. I had a client that said to me, um, I've been told all my life that my parents wanted a boy and they got a girl. And so I wanted to be loved by my parents. So I started to wear pants all the time. I didn't wear dresses. I started to cut my hair really short and, and kind of try to get a tomboy look so that my parents would see me as the boy they wished they had had. And so I was never happy with the way I looked because I was trying to make them happy with who I was and what I looked like. And so I became so unhappy with myself, not me and my client, that um, I wasn't living my truth. So when you really can understand, and that's the first part of my book, the first third, they're broken into thirds. The first third is the past, is really connecting the dots to what's the ground root, what's the, the underlying cause of why you don't feel lovable, or why you aren't loving, or why you can't trust relationships, or why you have trouble emotionally being authentic and um, vulnerable and sharing how you feel. Because maybe when you've done in the past, you've been knocked down, and so you've built a wall around yourself. You know, our body wants to always protect ourselves from pain that we've experienced before. And in that process, we actually create walls. I call them protective walls around us. It's almost like you fortify your castle. You know, think of the big walls around the castle with a moat, right? And the higher the walls are, guess what? You're protected, right? And what happens is you don't allow people in, and you also become an island. You know, you have a moat around you. You're, all, you're an island by yourself. And your loneliness is self-created. Um, and that's not to blame you, not to make you feel bad about yourself. It's really, I'm hoping to, if I can encourage you about anything here, it's empowering you 
that you get to take down this wall and say, I no longer want to hide behind this wall. I'm no longer going to hide and try to be the parent, the child the parents wanted of the boy. I'm going to be me. I'm going to wear sexy stilettos if I want to. I'm going to wear sandals if I want to. It doesn't matter. I'm going to do what I want, what feels right for me. And people can choose whether they like me or not. And I want to share one other part to my story. It's in my book, too. Really quick. I went to a James Van Prague um, seminar-like type thing. It was a, a presentation. And if you don't know who he is, he is actually an individual who has learned to speak with spirits. He learned it when he was very young and ignored it. And he finally decided, I'm going to accept this gift. I went there because my mother's second husband had just passed away. And he had Alzheimer's, advanced cases. He, so he couldn't think. He couldn't see because he had macular degeneration. And he couldn't hear because he was deaf from the, the service, being a pilot. And out of 1,800 people in this amphitheater, okay, James Van Prog was listening to different spirits, and he started talking to one at a time, and then one person would stand up when you knew it was you. And he would, the spirit would say things to make you know it was for you. So once I knew, and I'm not going to go into the details, but once I knew it was me and I stood up, do you know the first thing that the spirit said to me, my, my stepfather, his name was Bill, he said through James Van Prog, Bill says, I want you to know you're perfect just the way you are and not to change for anyone. Now this was like the father I never had. I didn't have it by my biological father. By the time my mother married the stepfather, we were adult women. It was like I finally had the father figure in spirit form tell me what I needed to hear, that I was perfect just the way I was. Now you have to understand, we were still having troubles, my husband and I, and I was trying everything to change to not ask too many questions, to not get into too detailed emotional conversations. Everything I thought he did not like in me, I was changing. I was miserable because I was not being true to myself. And here a spirit, my stepfather, saying these words to me is like the profound messages in this book of mine. And it's really, I believe, it's not even just the stepfather who said it to me. For me, it was even a higher level. It was the father the God of Creator, who said to me, you are perfect just the way you are. And when we can learn to love and accept this being, this beautiful soul that's inside of our physical body, it is so beautiful. And you are so beautiful. That no man, no woman, no child can change the soul of you. And when you can see your light, you will be a beacon to this world. And you will make tremendous strides and has such a beautiful impact in life. You know, I want to take the message you just gave and invite all of our viewers right now to think about what if you were perfect just the way you are right now? Right? And I can just imagine how many people might have tears rolling down their eyes. It's the one thing we're hungry for is to be seen to be loved for who we are. And Cynthia has just given you a gift for you to know that just the way you are is perfect. And with that, there's a freedom. I, and I, I work with so many clients, they, the people say, I have never felt so free just knowing I don't have to try anymore. I can just be me. It's like such a weight that's lifted off your heart. And it's amazing, and we're, and we're going to go into a free gift I'm going to give you, but before I get there, when you heal your heart's pain, and this is your pain that you've created, that you've perceived, love can enter into your life. But until you still have pain in your heart, love will always escape you. And so I really encourage all of you, give yourself the greatest gift you can. And say to yourself right now, in the chair, the couch, wherever you're sitting, I love and accept myself just the way I am. And I'm not perfect. No one's perfect, and no one's supposed to be perfect. And it's okay, and I'm going to start to do everything I can to love myself. Because then people will see the love that I am, not that I, I believe that I am. It's everything, your perspiration, your energy 
exudes love. And think about this, you can see people like Mother Teresa. She's the smallest little woman, four feet, four or five, whatever. And all she is is love. She's got wrinkles all over the place. She's got gray hair. She's kind of frumpy and a little heavy set. But she it only is love. And people just want to hug her and to make contact with her. Because all she is is love, unconditional love. And that she's not love because people want to hug her. She's loved because she is as a soul love. And that's the simple, the simplicity of this whole thing. And why we all go to these summits, why we all read the books, myself included. I've been to many training classes in my, my own personal spiritual journey. And, you know, it's not a pill. You don't take a pill to feel better. And we're not going to really talk about this in the summit, but I really believe our physical symptoms the aches and pains we have, our illnesses, diseases, are all created from the unhealthiness that we have within our body. And it's all from our emotional pain. And as a physical therapist, I have seen over and over again, when you resolve the emotional pain that you have within yourself, your physical symptoms just go away. It's really amazing. You know, Cindy, I think this is actually the perfect segue for you to share with us. You've got a free offer for our viewers. Could you tell us about it? Great. Well, since we're talking about love and feeling and the hearts and the, the pain that we hold within our body, our heart is really um, the center of our soul. Okay? It's how we feel. So we hold a lot of pain there. And we're not a psychiatrist. We don't need to go into psychology here. But you hold pain in your heart. And so what I'm giving you is a beautiful guided meditation with gorgeous music and my voice bringing you through your heart. And there's four chambers in your heart. And each chamber you're going to go into, you're actually going to find a word or a feeling. You're going to sense maybe it's fear of intimacy. Maybe it's depression. Whatever the word is, there's no right and wrong. It's just feeling and letting that come to you. And then we're going to clean that chamber of the heart. And release it. And then when we're all done releasing this toxicity, this emotional debris is what I call it, then we're going to fill your heart up with love and light. And then, remember the cup that was empty, the, the gas tank that was empty that would never fill? Now your cup will run it over with love and light and healing. And as your heart beats every time, this your blood is bringing out this love, light, healing that's going to go to every cell. And guess what? Health, vitality, well-being, all of this is coursing through you. And it's such a beautiful, powerful meditation. I'm giving it to all of you free. So I encourage all of you to, first of all, I know Iris will have the link underneath the, the, the replay here. But it's also just my website, www.cynthiamazafero, M-A-Z as in zebra, A-F as in Frank, E-R-R-O, Dot com, then there's a forward slash, and then you say the name of the, the meditation. Heart, home of meditation. I'm sorry, heart, home of healing meditation. And you just go on that, click, and write your name and your email, and you'll get it instantly. And I encourage you to listen to this guided meditation each time. And when you're done, record the four words or four feelings that you have in each chamber. And then do additional work on those areas as you, as those feelings continue to present themselves, like I did with mine, where, where my editor left. It was long after my husband, but you know you're going to have these residual things that want to come up, but you're going to have tools how to get rid of it. And I hope you all go and buy my book, Powerful Beyond Measure, on Amazon. Three steps to claim your power within for a happy and healthy life, and it's a great gift. The holidays are coming up. Give a gift to someone else, too, as well as yourself. And um, with that book, you get six extra bonuses. You'll get a workbook where instead of writing your answers when you do the exercise in the book, you get to write it in a workbook. So when you go back to read the book again or you lend it, no one sees what you already wrote. You start fresh again, a new layer. Then you get two guided meditations. You get a self-assessment, and you also get a personalized autograph inspirational message and no author does this except myself it was something i created 
And when you go on this page where you get all the six bonuses together, you're going to have 10 different topics. And you're going to pick the topic that is most important to you in the moment in your life right now. You're going to open it up, and there will be the message. And you print it out and put it right in your book, and you have an autographed message from the author with love and light. And the book is so amazing because the miracle that unfolds just for you at the perfect time in your life as you're reading it. So I hope you all will take advantage of both the meditation and also the book. And I'm just going to invite everyone who's watching to remember that the link is right below this video. You don't have to remember that whole, you know, link and how, how it's spelled. It's, it's right there. Just click on the link, take advantage of Cynthia's free, free offer. Um, and I still have a couple of questions for you, Cindy. I don't know, Cindy, Cynthia, I'm going to call you both. Um, you talk about the disciplining of the self. Why is that important? Explain what that is and why is that important? The cycle of self is a cycle that we start to perpetuate in our life. Um, you, um, you can take any word with the words, the first three words as being DYS or DIS. Um, I'm dysfunctional, I'm dishonest, or they're dishonest. Um, any word you want to use. And what happens is you continue to repeat that, that, that storyline, that belief. And you get stuck. It's like a funnel. You just keep going around and around. And you remember how the, when the water goes down a funnel, it sink, and it, it kind of sucks you down? There's no way to get out. And it's, how, it's so destructive in your life. And it causes dis-ease, meaning not the disease, which it does that too, but it causes uneasiness in your body, which then also creates dysfunction. If you don't feel that you are capable or um, ambitious enough to um, go speak to your boss, let's say about a new raise or new hours or new responsibilities, whatever, you're not able to go and step into that place, then you're creating a dis-ease within yourself and then you feel dysfunctional. You feel like you're not an integral team member. You feel like, you know, I just come here, no one respects me, but it's all about you. They might think you're the greatest employer, play, but you don't see it. So you become dysfunctional in your life. You know, you might think your husband doesn't give you enough attention or your wife doesn't give you enough attention or your children are disrespectful as they get older and they're teenagers. No one loves me. No one, no one's listening to me anymore. I'm just like this, uh, you know, robot, house cleaning, mother, wife, everything else. And nobody sees me. But this is not about the kids. It's not about your spouse. Guess who it's about? You. But that's not the bad thing. That's the greatest news because you get to change that. And that's what's so exciting about finding that power within yourself, loving yourself. And then it's like, well, I really don't care if so-and-so feels this way or not because you're feeling great. You're enjoying every moment of your day. And it's it just so amazing. I was going to say, it takes away the dependence from somebody else. Yes, you're right, Iris. That's, we call that codependency. And that's so important. If you're bringing up a great point because you're, you're determining my happiness is only um, an end product if they're happy. What a way to live. What if they're never happy? Guess what that means? You're never happy. So if you're living a life where you're feeling unloved, unhappy that's because you're basing it all on the external stimuli that you're perceiving backwards and i want to say that again you're perceiving backwards so let's take those teenager kids who don't think that you're you don't think they're giving you enough attention they're disrespectful they eat their supper and they're doing their cell phone or whatever and they don't tell you about the day and you feel that they're disinterested and they walk away and you have this feeling all about this that's not maybe necessarily what the kids are feeling, but it's your perception. And so learning how to really communicate and work within the family and work within yourself and say, it looks like you're really, I've had a lot of stress today. You know, what was your day like? This is not about you being ignored. And so we have to frame that and look at the things differently in our life. It's, it's so empowering because I'm giving you the keys to your happiness right back to the person who deserves them. That's you. You get to control everything about your life. It's the best news in the world. All right, Cindy. So my last question to you is, if there was one thing you would hope our viewers take away from our call today, what would that be? Well, I'm not a father, and I guess I'm a mother. 
and maybe I'll be Mother Earth. And I'm speaking to you through the spirit of Mother Earth. You are perfect just the way you are. And may you all see your divine beauty within yourself and love it and nurture it and allow your passions to come alive. And with that, the world will be a flower unto you. Mm, and with that, Cindy, I want to say thank you so much for the time that you've given us, for the free offer you've given us. You've actually given us a bonus offer for the people who choose to buy the downloads for, you know, all this knowledge that you brought together. You've had a lot of different jobs and tons of training to be able to put all of this together concisely in our conversation and in your book and for the difference that you make in the world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Iris. And I really hope all of you buy this bundle from her summit because the, the value that she's providing you with all these different expertise, we all speak a language, but you're going to find certain ones that really resonate with you and, and take that information. And I, like Iris said, I'm giving you another bonus if you buy that bundle. And it's going to allow you to really claim your power within and make you be and feel powerful beyond measure. So I hope you buy that bundle. Yeah, and my oh, invitation and also is that when you can re-listen to an expert that you really connect with, you're gonna get more and more messages, more gems that you didn't hear before. And you can hear them two months later, you can listen to Cindy four months later, and you'll hear something different, something that you need in that moment. Exactly. And, and the extra bonus on top of this is that we're going to donate a portion of what you pay for these downloads to help promo fairs support women in developing countries so that they can have a, it's called microcredit, a small loan so that they can grow their business. And as they pay it back, they get more money to keep growing their business so that they can support their family and their children. And I've seen how difficult their lives are in developing countries. And I'm honored with all the experts that are part of this summit this year and the difference that we can all make together. So thank you. Thank you very much, Iris. And thank you for having me. And I hope I was able to touch all of your hearts in some way. Um, you're just tremendous, all of you. Thank you. You were awesome. Thank you.